What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. But in today's Division 2 video, I have just reached loop 20 in Descent. And I wanted to show you exactly how I did it. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you know the whole spiel. Now let's go. So, starting off with the weapons, okay? Now this is going to be a whole long spiel, okay? Now starting off with the weapons, there is a method to my madness, okay? Now with the SESG-12, in my opinion, this is the best shotgun in Descent. Now the reason being is it has a high RPM, a decent damage, and it has a magazine. It does not get loaded individually. It is a magazine-fed shotgun. So the reloads are really fast. Now, not only that, but shotguns in Descent come with damage to armor, which we all know is multiplicative. So that's the reason why I'm using the shotgun. Now, the other amazing thing is whenever you're using something like unhinged right so you can see i have unhinged right here it's only level two now i have unhinged that gives me 36 percent weapon damage but then it takes away 35 percent stability and accuracy now what i have noticed playing uh, a lot of descent i'm not going to tell you how much i've played descent but what I can tell you is that once your accuracy and your stability starts to go into the negatives, the Super 90 and the M870 recoil like crazy, where the SASG-12 does not recoil as bad. So that's another reason why I'm using the shotgun, because it comes with damage to armor, it is a magazine-fed shotgun, and the recoil is not bad considered uh against the other you know shotguns that you can get next up we have the rpk now the reason i am using the rpk is because it is a lmg with damage to targets out of cover now remember that's another multiplicative attribute now i'm using this weapon only because i have bullet hell so just skipping ahead really quick, I do have the Bullet King Exotic Talent Bullet Hell. So my weapons never reload. I have, you know, I can just keep shooting as long as I have bullets. And with my pistol, I have unlimited ammo. Now, with that being said, that turns this LMG into a monster because you never have to reload. Now I'm using the RPK because it has a smaller reticle compared to the other LMGs and it shoots faster than all the other LMGs that you have available. I mean, I think the MG5 might be available, but I have not seen one drop yet. So as far as I know, the RPK is your golden ticket for LMGs during this part of Descent. Now, if you want something that shoots slower but has a higher base damage, I would probably go with the M60. Um, but for me personally, with the running gun, and I like weapons that shoot a little bit quicker, the RPK is perfect, especially if you have bullet hell for an exotic talent. And then finally for my weapons, I have the Magnum. Now again, the reason why I'm using this is for that high base damage. This one... Of course, it has that low magazine size of six being a revolver. However, I have the bullet hell exotic talent. So there's no reloading with this Magnum. So I get to utilize all of that higher base damage and not have to worry about having that low magazine size because with bullet hell, this Magnum is unlimited ammo. It's just as fast as you can shoot. It'll just keep shooting. Now... Let's get into the, uh, the skills, because the skills do matter. I'm using the Reviver Hive that has helped me at least four times getting up to loop 20. Um, I have gone down four different times, and the Reviver Hive has helped me each time. 
just remember that if you go down and you revive yourself, you have to pick up a revive token. Now, the only place to get the revive token is from these little shops right here, okay? I don't have one available because I already bought one earlier, but that's where the revive token would be located. But the reviver hive is perfect, especially if you're doing this solo. Now, my next one is the Crusader Shield. Now, I'm using this with Vanguard for a reason. Now, just to skip around again to my talents, I do have Vanguard. While deploying a shield, it makes it invulnerable for five seconds and then grants bonus armor to all your other allies. Cool. I am using this in conjunction with my shotgun because the SASG-12 can be used with the Crusader Shield. Now, not only that, but you might not know that the only way to get your shield higher in Descent is to increase your skill tier. So you can't just keep going armor, 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 and then get more shield health like you would in the normal game. Here in Descent, the only thing that increases your shield is your skill tier. Now, because of that, I have chosen to do four, you know, upgrades in my skill tier to tier four, and that gives me 150% more shield health than I had previously. Now, not only that, but that also increased my revive armor repair. Whenever my reviver hive picks me up, now I get 40% of my armor back as soon as I get picked up. Okay. So we have talked about my weapons and why I'm using them, and we have talked about my skills and why I'm using them. Now let's talk about all of these amazing talents. So starting off with the exotic talents, these are going to be the three exotic talents that I highly recommend you go for no matter what you are doing in Descent. First one is Breathe Free. Now Breathe Free will give you free amplified damage. You need this going up the loop levels because the NPCs get tankier and tankier as you progress. So, Breathe Free is perfect. Not only that, but if you can kill a red bar really quick, you get that movement speed and then you can just keep bouncing off of NPCs and you're good to go. Now, Bullet Hell, I've already explained why I'm using it because I do not want to reload. If you have no reload, it completely changes the game for you, especially for your outgoing damage. And then finally, I'm using Bloodsucker. Now, I hate that this is an exotic talent. This should not be an exotic talent, and during the PTS, this was actually down here in the defensive group. But for some reason, they added Bloodsucker and Glass Cannon to the exotic talents. So because of that, I have been forced to use Bloodsucker as my third exotic talent. Now why? Because every time you get a kill, you get bonus armor, and this can stack up to 10 times. So on top of all the other talents I have going, I can get upwards of 80% bonus armor just from the Bloodsucker talent. Next up, we're going to do our Offensive, Defensive, and Utility talents. I'm using Unhinged, and I only specced into this one twice, and there is a reason. Now, the more you spec into this, the more negative stability and negative accuracy you're going to get on your entire build. Yes, you do get a lot of weapon damage out of it, but after, you know, stage 2, once you get to 3, 4, 5, 6, I mean, all the way up to 10... You're looking at like negative 100 plus percent accuracy and stability. So to counter that, you would need a few talents. And one of them would be right here, Optimized. Now the reason why I have not increased my Unhinged talent is because my Optimized talent is not maxed out. Now once I get this sucker maxed out, I'll know exactly how much stability and accuracy I can put into Unhinged and not actually lose anything from it, if you see what I'm saying. Next up, we have Allegro. I have this one on here to increase the uh, RPM of my LMG, 
and it's only specced into one right now because I am really hyper focused into my defensive talents. Strained is level two, and with strained, you gain 10% crit hit damage for every 0.5 seconds firing, up to five times. Obliterate, stage two. Crit hits will increase your weapon damage by 2% for six seconds, stacks up to 30 times. Close and personal, stage five. Whenever you kill an enemy within five meters, you get 50% weapon damage for nine seconds. And then finally, Vigilance. This one's only level one, 10% extra damage until you take damage. Okay. Now our defensive tab. I am highly specced into defense and armor because your survivability is key when doing descent. Now I would highly recommend trying to max out these four immediately. You want the hazard, you want the preservation, you want the adrenaline rush, and you want clutch. You want all of those maxed out immediately. Reason being is insulated level 10 gives you 55% hazard. Preservation level 10 gives you 70% armor repair on kill and another 50% if I get a headshot kill. That's 120% armor repair right there. Level 8 for the Adrenaline Rush. Whenever I'm within 10 meters of an enemy, I get 24% bonus armor stacks up to 3. So that's what? That's 72%, right? Hold on. 60. Yeah, 72%. Clutch, level 8. Whenever I'm below 22% armor, crit hits will repair 40% of my armor. And then Vanguard. Whenever I pop a shield, it's invulnerable for five seconds and grants 50% of my armor as bonus armor to all allies. Now, finally, let's talk about the utility tab. Opportunistic is a must have when you're using a shotgun. And I'm telling you right now, try to max this one out immediately because once you max it out, it is 50% more amplified damage. So, opportunistic gotta have it optimized is another one you have to have to counter unhinged because remember unhinged will take away from your accuracy and stability so with optimized we get weapon handling which increases both accuracy and stability and then the last two utilities we have on here go with each other so trauma to apply a status effect and then we have Vindictive, whenever we kill a status-affected enemy, we get crit chance and crit hit damage. And that's it, everyone. I am currently on loop 20, and for right now, that is number 24 in the world. All right, so I'm going to continue on. I hope you enjoyed this little video on uh, how I've reached. Now, spoilers, before I get into the whole build breakdown part of how did I get up to uh, loop 20, I did decide to just go ahead and give up. So you can see right here, simulation ended. Um, it, it, it takes too long. There's no real point to doing this. It takes, look, look it, it took me nearly seven hours to get up to loop 20. And, and what's the real point? Now, I wanted to show you this whole, like, loadout so you can see exactly how I got up to loop 20. But there's no reason to go any further. They have the rewards locked beha behind loop 31. You have to get up to loop 31 to even get a chance of getting a named item blueprint. You can't even get the best... Uh, reward the highest patch for this game mode unless you hit loop 40 40 there are people that can't even kill the nemesis let alone get up to where i'm at right now at loop 20 and the developers decided that the highest rewards are locked behind loop 31 to 40 and that at loop 40 is where you get your top patch so you have to kill the nemesis every single week during this season or you do not get all of the collectibles. 
and you will not be able to get all of the actual game mode collectibles, meaning like the arm patches and the blueprints, unless you hit that 31 to 40 range. And you can't even get eligible for that patch unless you hit 40. So they're expecting you to spend at least 14 hours straight in a game mode just for some rewards. Now, the reason why I wanted to spoil it like this is because I wanted to show you exactly what your rewards are going to be at loop 20, okay? So all I did was I entered the first room and I just died because I wanna see what I get for 20 loops. So here we go. Now, if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope this video helps you in some way, shape, or form. All right, so you can see I did get that exotic cash for killing the nemesis. I received eight apparel cash keys. I am now shade level 5106. So let's see how many levels I went up. I went up 31 levels. So for 20 loops, I went up 31 levels. That gave me 20 caches right here, but then I have all the other caches on the ground and I have that exotic cache as well for killing the nemesis. But again, I only just reached, what was that? That was a... Uh, tier two right so did i get the arm patch for tier two i are tier three i didn't even get the arm patch for tier three because i have to complete loop 20 so that means i have to go back spend another seven hours to get up to loop 20 complete it just to get the tier three patch so i got all the way up to 20 and i don't even get the patch i have to complete loop 20 you see how this is just ridiculous? And and what did I get for seven hours of gameplay? I got 31 caches. Uh, 30 of those are field proficiencies. And I received one exotic cache. So before I show you the build breakdown and how I got all the way up to loop 20, let me know if you think these uh, rewards are worth it to you. Because that was seven hours. I spent my entire morning and lunch doing this. And I still don't have all the caches. Dang, I'm, I'm just trying to pick them up just so I can walk away. I don't wanna um, lose any uh, free items. Oh, Night Watcher. But let me know what you think. There we go, should be able. There we go. All right, so we're gonna jump back over to uh, loop 20 and I'm gonna finish up with the build, but I wanted to show you the rewards because I know a lot of you are like, is it even worth it? In my opinion, it's not. It's not worth it at all. Uh, the fact that they have these collectibles hidden behind each nemesis every single week is horrible. I don't know anybody at all in the community that has done it every single week. And if you do, please comment down below. You have all the... Uh, the comms, go for it. But for me personally, I think I'm missing a week. Let's see if uh, it should be under collectibles, right? So I just gained a new collectible. I'm only at six. So there's seven available descent and I'm only six. So I missed a collectible myself. So I don't even have all of the lore that's hidden behind descent. And now I don't even know if I'll be able to get it ever because there's only 12 available and there's only 12 weeks in the season. So once the season's done, they move on to the next season. Same with these patches. These patches will change every single season. So if you do not reach loop 40 before the end of this season, you will not be able to get these patches. And it goes all the way up to tier one. Now remember, you don't get the tier one patch at loop 40. You have to complete loop 40 to get the patch. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think it's worth it and let's jump back over to the build breakdown. Yeah.
video on uh, how I've reached loop 20. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care now. Bye bye, Dan. And uh, yeah, hit that like, subscribe. You know the little YouTube spiel. I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. Take care, everyone. Peace.